Welcome back to Costume Co. If you're new here, I do almost weekly videos analyzing TV shows and movies from a costume perspective. If this is something that interests you, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so you don't miss out. Warning, there are major spoilers for all eight seasons of Game of Thrones. Hi everyone, it's Heidi from Costume Co. back with another video. And today I am so delighted to have Linnea Stenforce here with me uh, to interview her about a lot of the costumes from Game of Thrones. I've been so excited to have her on here and I think everyone's gonna really enjoy uh, hearing everything that she has to share with us today. So hello, Linnea, how are you Hi. today? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. Great. Um, so anyway, Linnea is a couture effects artist as she worked on Game of Thrones. She's worked on lots of other productions as well. But today we're going to particularly talk about Game of Thrones and what her involvement on that show was like. But to start off, Linnea, I was just going to ask you, how did you, um, for, what's your background and how did you get involved in costuming? Um, well, I come from, like, a, I have a big passion for historical clothing, like, from the beginning, and I studied fashion in Stockholm, and then I specialized in London uh, on, uh, in costume effects on London College of Fashion. Um, so I lived in London, and then I got offered a job on uh, Game of Thrones, and I moved up uh, to Belfast, and I worked on Game of Thrones. But uh, previous to that, I had... Um, I had worked uh, in Sweden with uh, a lot of uh, Swedish television and Swedish films, but um, I felt like I wanted to go uh, international and work with larger productions. So that's kind of what happened. Yeah, before I get into the Game of Thrones, like I know Sweden's actually having like quite a bit of a, you know, um, maybe because it's things like uh, Netflix, they're actually coming out with some amazing productions now yeah. that are yeah. getting exposed to the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a, we have a lot of things going on here, but they're all, even though they're really big productions, it's still, because Sweden is a small country, so the production team would be a lot smaller. So also a lot of contemporary clothing, so it's not a lot of historical clothes, costumes. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, that's why I wanted to go and work away from Sweden for a bit, but so it, sometimes, yeah. So that's where your heart is in historical costumes then more so. Yeah, or I like like because I'm, I'm a, I work with materials like that's my specialty. So I work with fashion as well and develop materials for loads of different, uh, um, um, yeah, loads of different fashion houses and and uh, uh, film productions and TV series and also like just art, just because uh, I know so many materials. So uh, and usually in contemporary clothing, it's you don't make the things, you just buy them, or, or if you make them, you make them out of contemporary already existing materials so it does, it's not really uh, my my uh, place to work at so mm -hmm. that's, yeah. so then how did you get involved uh, now you said you you went you were in London and then you um, how did you get wind of Game of Thrones did you know this was <laughs> going to be this huge thing that it is uh, well I'd seen because um, I, I started season three so I had seen season one and two and I really loved it and I'm such a big fan of uh, Michelle Clapton as well from from previously because uh, I've seen her work before and uh, when um, when I got uh, the offer from Game of Thrones um, I, I to be honest I wasn't even sure where, where Belfast was <laughs> so mm -hmm. I uh, so I, I was just thrilled to pieces and I moved up there and I had no idea what to expect and the how such a big machine uh, I mean just just uh, the the first week was just trying to get to know how to get around the studios and the costume department because it was so big and so many people and that's not like it like what I'm used to working in film like uh, the the biggest uh, costume team I had been on until that day with maybe 15 people and I mean this is uh, so much more people <laughs> on Game of Thrones so. absolutely yeah it's like a giant building isn't it yeah, well, it's really big studios. I mean, they're big, um, these big studios everywhere. So, like, w when you work with big films, I, I found out after <laughs> because I've worked on large scale films now. But um, it's just uh, the machine of it because people are, there's not so many people in Belfast where the studios are. So, there's a lot of people from everywhere in the world. Uh, so, uh, it's just, um, and everyone just, uh, appears in Belfast and makes this amazing show happen. And I was just so fascinated by it. Uh, but I don't think it, it, it was maybe after I've been there for a season where, when I realized what a big, 
opportunity this was and how amazing it was that I had actually got offered the job. So, so like, what's yeah. the space like that you work out of? Is it, uh, you know, are, are you in a giant room with a bunch of other creators? Like, how does that all work? Well, it's a, it's a big costume building. Uh, I have I have my space, and then there's a workroom, and there's the armory, and the breakdown department, and the crowd department, uh, and uh, all of the trucks. So, um, it's a, the costume department is separate from uh, other departments, but we are also divided into mm-hmm. different areas. So, do you have to do you carve out a little space for yourself? Like this is my space. I'm making it my own out of that large yeah. large space. Me, me, and the team that works with me. Mm-hmm. So. How many are on your team, by the way? Well, it varies depending on how many uh, people, uh, how many people we are addressing. No, you know, so so usually there's a lot of of daily crew, and then there's some uh, um, like of, of the permanent crew that would come and work. So on IMDb, okay, I looked at your IMDb. You have mm-hmm. a lot of different titles that you've started. So it said that you started out as a textile artist, and then you went to fa- uh, costume fabricator to key cutter. Uh, and then to Wildlings and finally Key Couture effects artists. So what's the, yeah. uh, can you just give me a rough <laughs> definition of what those, all, all those different titles are? Well, it's kind of, I've done the same thing the whole time. It's just because when I started, my position was new. So mm-hmm. I think we just tried to figure out the, uh, and like, you know, cause I've worked with a lot of the costumes that kept them warm, like the warm clothing and the cold, you know, the further the series went, the colder it got. So the the more maybe importance my department, my part of the department had um, in the significance of the, and the amount of costumes. So I think we just tried to find a suitable, um, suitable uh, title for that. So, but what I do is couture effects. It's my it's my uh, niche in costume. So mm-hmm. it's like costume effects, but it's more textile art uh, orientated. So you yeah. work with a fine. So, so for um, someone who doesn't know what that is, can, are you able to just give a, a quick explanation? What, like how you, like you work with fur a lot, you work, but you work with other textiles as well? Yeah, well, I work with, with materials. <laughs> so um, uh, I am. Um, Usually, I'm the go-to person in every production that I'm on. When you have like a, a specific thing that you need to be made, uh, but you don't know maybe how uh, to make it, I, I don't do. I can do, but it's I, I usually don't do classic tailoring or uh, or uh, just use a uh, material off the shelf. So uh, I, I develop materials and textures and uh, manipulate fabrics and and work with them with the costumes in a different way. So like, uh, I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it the way other people would do it maybe because, uh, so that, you know, like in, in a fantasy production, you have uh, specific needs, uh, uh, that might not, uh, apply to other things. You know, if you have a, like a dragon queen, you know, or, uh, or the wild links, uh, that's, uh, you just need them to look like they're from their world. So, and then I, I usually have the tools and the skill sets to do that. So. Yeah. So, um, so how, like you, you must've done a lot of like, uh, uh, mock-ups or, or sort of trial and error to see where you could. So how would that work? Would you like, how many would you, would you do in, uh, in order until you got to the final product? Like, uh, would, you, what you, would you make something like, would you say, okay, I'm going to try something out and then I'm going to show it to Michelle Clapton to, to see what she thinks of it. Like, how would that process yeah. work? Well, uh, the designer, like Michelle on Game of Thrones, would uh, come up with the with the idea. Like she would make the design, but uh, I would then suggest different ways of how to build the material, or like how to maybe get the specific approach that she's looking for, or he, if it's the the designer. It's always the way I work, and then we discuss it and uh, um, until uh, the designer is uh, is pleased with uh, what she has or he has in front of her. Um, obviously you develop the the technique because um, the development process is what takes the longest for me really just to come up with the actual ha- way to build the texture and then like with with a with a coat like that there's so many people involved in the making so my my key function is to build the material for the coat 
So, yeah. And then, and then do you then train, uh, uh, one of the assistants to take over to like to, you know, cause obviously you'd have to make multiples, I'm assuming for, uh, for, you know, for, for stand-ins or for, uh, stunts. Yeah. Well, we'd, we'd all be like, there'd be a, a selected few that would be able to create the same texture, uh, mm-hmm. that I, that I'd show. But then obviously we have the, uh, the, the cutters, uh, in the workroom and stuff that makes the, the actual silhouette and we work together with putting it together uh in to fit uh, Amelia in the end and so it's a lot of it's a it's a big machine so everyone has the different functions Mm -hmm. so So what was your key way of communicating obviously if you're close enough you could obviously get up and go talk to them but let's say uh Michelle Clapton the costume designer wasn't on hand would you just like send her email pictures do you like would you text each other what was your main form of communication that you preferred I don't know. We we speak a lot. It's constant communication in yeah. every possible medium, I guess. And Which, jazz, like assistant designers as well. There's always assistant designers on productions, so and they they are very important. Mm-hmm. Now, so uh, before we get to Danny's costumes, which is sort of like you know, I'm really excited to talk to you about. Um, uh, I know that you also worked on uh, some of the wilding costumes, um, and also I understand that you did John's season seven costume, the North of the Wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do, do you want? Uh, so, Sam, do you mind telling me a little bit about that? Well, it's the same. Uh, what, uh, what do you mean? What do What do you want me to say? Oh, um, do you want to just tell me about how, like, how, how, like, was did you start on those before you did Amelia's, or did you, uh, or had you started on Amelia and then kind of went to John, or were you just sort of doing them all at the same time? Like you said, you came on at season three, so obviously, <laughs> that's I think where you started, right? Yeah, I usually make. For a season, it's usually uh, usually work parallelly with with many different costumes in the same time, just to keep because we have a tight schedule and things just need to happen. So mm-hmm. yeah, like for instance, yeah. I saw one of your. I think it was on. Uh, it might have been on on social media that you were talking about when you did the wildlings. It was just like an incredible amount of time and effort put into that, and just the enormity mm-hmm. of it. So, how many how many of those costumes were you working on like simultaneously? Well, it's hard to say because, like, uh, it's also with the team and everyone's working on them. So, like, once they're done, once I've done my part, someone else would do their part. And then we have the breakdown. And uh, so, like, all of the costumes are, like, happening at once, really. So it's just um, the no- numbers. But, I mean, it's... Uh, it's if it's if it's a it's if it's a group of people if it's seventy two people they all need they all need costumes so they all need to happen so you start at one end and then you know I start with my part and then someone else takes over that one and I start with the next one so mm-hmm. uh, that's kind of how it happens yeah and, and and like what time frame are you given to do that or is it just like it takes as long as it has to happen or you have like like say you have to have this deadline by this time or how does that all work. Yeah, deadlines is all my thing. <laughs> so we, have, we, we obviously have a deadline when when something needs to be finished. So uh, like if like with everything, you know. So if you work on on a production, then the fitting date is, is when a costume has to be finished because it needs to be fitted on a person. So um, uh, that's the actual deadline. But it's uh, I, I try not to work only to that deadline because you don't want to be finished at the very end. You need to have like a bit of leeway in case something happens or something else comes in or if they change uh, the shooting schedule so Mm -hmm. uh, you just need to so I I, I put up deadlines I put my up my own deadlines and then uh, uh, I stick to them but uh, it's also about like when once you've made a costume you know how long it will take you Mm -hmm. so uh, then you just need to count your hours and make sure it's actually possible to make it so Mm -hmm. um how many like how many hours a day were you, would you be working during a crunch time would you say well we usually we work 11 hours a day mm-hmm. regularly that's a, that's a, a normal normal working day mm-hmm. in the film industry yeah yeah 5 days a week yeah well <laughs> sometimes <laughs> more <laughs> uh and then yeah so you're working to the hiatus i guess and then you're just like the crunch yeah um yeah. so uh now so you were saying okay so you came on in season three so when did you start working on danny's costumes and then i know that also you did some work on miss sande when did that start to happen well whenever they needed warm clothing 
then then my department came in because we work a lot to, like we made mostly made the warm clothes so that was for season seven mm-hmm. so when you yeah. found out that you were going to be working on Daenerys Targaryen's uh sort of yes. that iconic outfit how did you were you excited about that yeah no I'm but I'm always excited <laughs> for me even though I'm really really pleased with working with her I took like for me every work every job I do I love just as much really like mm-hmm. it for me it's more about the uh, the ability to create something amazing with my hands that, that will like be seen by uh, by many people and appreciated and and just be able to 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 create I mean so so I wouldn't I wouldn't like less to work on on, on a wildling really but then obviously it takes what, what's different about making a coat like that is that it's a lot of pressure so because it, it, it's going to be, it's the best series in the world and it's it's a really important costume. So it needs to be, have the same quality as people expect. So, and everyone's going to like really, really fine tunely look at it. So Yes, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. zoom in on all the details <laughs> and um, look for every yeah. little thing. Because of course, you know, uh, there's cosplayers where, you are, uh, sorry, I didn't have this question in there, but are you surprised at how many people want to recreate Danny as a, as a cosplay and and want to get every little detail like how you did it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's that's a new thing for me, <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it's really fun, and I really really love seeing all of their their mm-hmm. how they try and you know. Uh, yeah, I actually I was at an, an I was at an event and I saw a girl dressed as Danny in her wildling. Uh, mm-hmm. her winter yeah. outfit and I was like oh my yeah. god like and, and she did a really good job like I I, I looked at the, the you know I did some close-up mm. shots of it and I was like wow you did a really good job on that so yeah. she that's what she said she she zoomed in on it and just studied mm-hmm. the technique and the cutting and everything so the back of course was the big challenge right for the uh, the back of the coat uh, I think the whole thing like because I don't I think it's going to be impossible to recreate it the exact same way as I've done it but I'm not going to say how I did it. <laughs> yeah, it's your secret. It's your trade secret. So don't, yeah. yeah. But, so don't uh, ask in the comments, everyone. No, <laughs> but then um, I, um, what was I going to say? I even saw you could, um, you could buy the coat on as a, as a costume, or like a, you know, as a Halloween costume on, on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, no, all of yeah. them are there. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. So um, I love that. So, uh, no, so besides like, you, you did Tormund as well, I think. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, it's funny. One of the, the girls that I do my videos with oftentimes, her and I were saying, that's one of the most underrated costumes. Like, you know, all the beautiful gowns get a lot of attention, obviously. But Tormund's costume is fantastic. And it it doesn't get the same sort of recognition, I think. Yeah, well, I think it's with all of the wild lengths. I don't. Because I, I really, really think those costumes are amazing. Because they're mm-hmm. so, every costume is unique. And it's just uh Egret as well. Egret is. Uh, I think a lot of people do love uh, cosplaying as her as well. Yeah, well, there. Uh, it's just a lot of details in them that I think maybe, if they weren't there, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. They wouldn't look genuine. So obviously, they play a lot of importance just just by looking at the scene. But I think a lot of maybe isn't like observed properly. If you really look at it, like the details in them are amazing. Just the work on the on the breakdown as well. That's mm-hmm. just uh, extraordinary. But yeah, no, and Tormund's, Tormund's costume was one of the first one I worked on. Um, and then it's the, <laughs> it was there the whole time. So. Yeah, he, does he just have that one costume the entire season or the entire <laughs> series? Poor Tormund. <laughs> Hopefully he has more than one so it's not too smelly. <laughs> I'm sure they wear undershirts and stuff, though, that get laundered. <clears throat> yeah, the people. Um, so uh, my other question is, uh, wh- uh, these, this is a two-part question. So what is the costume that um, uh, that was the most challenging? And then the second part of the question is, what is the costume that you're most proud of? Well, um, well, I'm mostly, like, obviously mostly pr- proud of the, uh, the season seven coat for Danny because it just changed a lot of, you know, it just... Uh, it got so much publicity and I'm so that's, that's a piece of pride just just because of the publicity but also because I'm so pleased with it mm-hmm. like I was so pleased with with the texture that I developed for that and then just just like uh, the end result was just amazing and she looks extraordinary so 
uh, and I loved making it. Uh, and it was challenging, but then I think also like the giants that I've worked on there, mm-hmm. they're also, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm so, they're very challenging. <laughs> yeah. Can <laughs> I ask good. you a question? I don't know if you're allowed to tell me this, but is it like, what is, what is it that you're wrapped? Like I saw in the behind the scenes, they're wrapping it like, look like raffia or some type of natural fiber, maybe hemp or something. Are you allowed to tell me what that is? That like, no. like layers and layers and layers and layers. You can't tell me layers of secrets, <laughs> layers of secrets, but that those <laughs> pants look like they took ages to make. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a big costume. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, is the actor, did you hire like a, I don't know if you know this, but was it a, a, a larger, I mean, obviously it was done in CGI, but it, it looked like a larger actor that portrayed the giant. Yeah, I know they're really tall. They yeah. are tall. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I saw them on these stands, you know, and so they're like, you know, sort of towering above while they're yeah, building them. Yeah. No, they're, you, you, they're really, they're famous tall people. So, and I'm super short. I'm only like five foot one. So, <laughs> so everything has to be sort of put up on a table for you <laughs> <laughs> so that you can, re- well, Amelia's would be fine though, because she's not that tall either. So you can have hers on a, on a, on a Judy or something, right? Um, I don't know if you can comment on this, but okay. One of my viewers asked me this. I thought this was an interesting question. There's a, there's an absence of fasteners. So like the whole series doesn't have any zippers or buttons. Like, so was that a little bit of a challenge for you? Like what kind of fasteners were you able to use then? Like I noticed ties were used, maybe hooks. Are you allowed to but comment I, on that? Yeah. Well, it's not really like, a, cause it's not a, a trade secret or, or stuff because if you work with medieval clothing Mm -hmm. you know they didn't have they didn't use really buttons or zips so you just have to look back in history and see what 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 did they use and how would how would this be made if it was made in medieval times so Mm -hmm. um so i also because i mostly make historical clothing it's it's Mm -hmm. um but they do use metal grommets (laughs) i did cite some i did spot some metal grommets (laughs) <laughs> they but, but people, you know, you could argue, though, it's even though it's medieval, like a medieval type um, fantasy setting, it's not specifically mm. medieval. Right. So you can no, kind of get away why, with that. Yeah, that's why it's so great, great with fantasy. That yeah. Way. Like, <laughs> if you just do historical dramas, it's just like, you know, you cannot make a mistake uh, with bringing in a material that wouldn't exist. But if you work with fantasy, you can you can like cheat it a little bit. Absolutely. Um now, this is just a fun little thing. I read that they you're referred to as Ikea by the <laughs> wardrobe team because you're from Sweden, because uh, Ikea is Swedish for common sense. Is that actually yeah. how it translates? <laughs> so yeah. how, did that, how did that happen? And how do you feel about people calling you Ikea? No, I think it's just because it, it was this big thing. Uh, big thing going on about Ikea and like this rumor about the, us using uh, Ikea rugs for the costumes and then because I also work with the fur uh, and then my name is Linnea and it kind of sounds like Ikea I don't know I don't oh, okay know you know I you know I was bashing back the comments about that I kept trying to correct people about that like everyone talking how Jon Snow had the the Ikea rug and I'm like no and then and then I was so happy just recently Michelle came out and actually corrected people about that because she did a lecture I suppose and that's how that whole thing came about and it got mm-hmm. everyone caught wind of it so uh so you were called <laughs> Ikea that's really cute so do you still get called <laughs> Ikea like even on non Game of Thrones productions no, no. I'm just, <laughs> just for that. It was yeah. specifically for that. Okay. So, uh, now, so Game of Thrones is done. You're done. Um, how, mm-hmm. like you're, you, you've obviously have other things you're working on. You're busy. So what, what are your future plans then? Well, I'm working, uh, with my textile studio, which is, uh, Couture Effects it's called. And we're, I, we're based in Stockholm and I have a little team here. I'm also uh, head of wardrobe at uh, the Royal Swedish Opera. So I'm kind of busy with that, but uh, I am. Um, my plan is just to continue. I, I, I get to offer offers and I work with uh, many productions in the same time. So mm-hmm. what, I, what I want to do, I just want to uh, use and spread my, my knowledge and materials and actually like be able to uh, show uh, the industry and people who might not know how many possibilities there are, you know, because uh, 
you can just uh, do so many things, but you just need someone that knows it in, a, in order to be able to do it. So because I think all of these modern technologies and stuff uh, like laser cutting or 3D printing and or just mold making, or you could even just like manipulate materials and go back to the basics. Uh, so that's what I'm, I'm just trying to spread the world, this, the word of my work. So that's awesome. Just utilize it, yeah. So in the future, if you're, if you're going to be working on uh, another film production, are you hoping just to mm -hmm. keep your shop in Sweden and work from there remotely rather than having to go and lift up roots and, you know, like you did yeah. with, uh, or would you go to yeah. location if you were called upon again to do an amazing, <laughs> are you, are there any plans to do the prequel to work on that at uh -huh. all? Well, um, not at the minute. I'm, but I'm right. I'm working with Netflix at the moment with another thing. Okay. So, Are you allowed uh, to tell us what it is, or is it a secret? No, no it's a secret. You're so mysterious. <laughs> Everything is a mystery. Yeah, well, it, maybe you'll share that later. Yeah, but I, um, I, I, I happily travel a little bit um, everywhere. But I, I live in Stockholm, so I've always lived in Stockholm, kind of. But I just was, I was away for like ten years. But yeah. <laughs> But um, it's just, uh, I think it's important, especially when you kind of live out of, out of a suitcase and you travel a lot to have your base uh, and also to have my team here. Uh, it's really valuable and have my machines, especially because you can't really bring your machines with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have like really specialized large machines. So just to have a, a studio where I can be able to make things. It's really valuable for me. That's so. amazing. Well, um, I want to thank you so much for um, for doing this interview. Everyone's going to be just excited to hear your you know your process and how you go about things. Um, now, I know you, we had talked about you had a little a little giveaway that you could do that I was going to offer to one of the viewers. Is that okay if we do that? Well, I have um, I make these little uh, card um, card holders with the uh, texture of mine. Okay, so what we'll do is if anybody wants to enter the contest, you have to go to Linnea's Instagram and follow her on Instagram. And then should they leave you a comment that they saw this video or how, how do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, if they, they say that they saw this video and they follow my page. Okay. And uh, I and then I just draw one of the names. We'll just so. draw one of the names. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Okay, cool. so we'll just open it up. So we'll see how many you get. <laughs> it might be yeah. a lot. It might be a big demand. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so and then she'll just draw for. So that's such a generous thing for you to offer, by the way. That's lovely. Okay. Oh, of course. Okay. That's well, so thank awesome. you so that's much. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And I was really excited to hear about your work on Game of Thrones. And I think that show is going to live on. Like it's it, it's going to you know it's just going to live on. It'll be one of those things that'll be epic. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Linnea. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you.